Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls are doing? Hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Check out the top right eye as well for even more nice links. And yeah, that's about it. Uh, in this video, we're going to keep working with the player GUI. And I want to actually just order a few things. So we have in our update function in game state, we have a few player updates outside of where they should be they should actually be in the update player section so i'm just going to go ahead and do that put them in there and see what we can do from there that'll be our first step so go ahead and do this and the rest of this video i'm thinking we're going to make sure that we add a key bind for the button we press for the character menu to open up and so on and so on so we'll have a few key binds there to play with and then we can start just start customizing the entire player GUI. So let me open up a few files. Once you put this update player stuff in here, I want you to call it though, right where it used to be. So this update player DT, just like that. And that will send in the DT variable into the other functions below it. So there you go. Now let's open up all our GUI stuff. Go up to your player GUI. I probably want player GUI.cpp uh, open and I also want the player GUI tabs, specifically the character tab where we're gonna add a few text stuff going uh, when we're going forward here. So there you go guys. But first of all, first things first my mans, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our SFML RPG folder and we're gonna go to config and we'll see all our keybinds here. All right, so first of all, we need to go into our supported keys, edit. And we'll see if we have a bunch of keys here. Uh, and this is the kind of annoying part. I mean, we have C here, we have all that stuff. We can put in a few more things, but we do actually have C. So let's just use C here. So C is two, right? So if we go to our game state, edit, we'll see that we haven't actually bound that to anything. So this is gonna be open, uh player tab character probably and we'll put c right there so that's gonna grab that c from our supported key so if you forgot how this system works basically all the keys that are supported in the system are going to be in this supported keys file and then you can grab those and put them into different initialization files for example this one where we use c as this string whenever we refer to this string we'll refer to c and now we can use that outside next time we start it just like this. So we'll say this key binds at move left or in our case, character tab C, then we'll use that. So that's great. Let's go to wherever we define this key binds and that's in, it seems to be in state.h. So good. Our game state has access to the key binds. Now our player GY does not have access to those key binds, sadly. So what we need to do is we need to somehow send in or make functionality for us to open that character tab from outside. The way we're doing it right now is in player GUI tabs, we're hard coded the C button in here. And that kind of makes it kind of makes it a little, little, eh, you know, I, I don't really like that. I, I want to, I want to have some kind of a functionality here to open a specific tab from outside. And to do that, I want to make a toggle function. Now, what is outside? Well, it's player GUI is outside. If we go in here, I need to recap this a few times just so you guys know what's going on. We have player GUI tabs here. So what we're going to have to do in here is we're going to have to create that function in here. So first of all, I'm going to do a uh, void toggle char character tab. Okay const and what we could do to make it a little easier on us is actually do toggle tab here and give a string and then we'll have all our tabs in a beautiful little uh, map instead of this but we'll start off with this since we only have one we don't have to worry too much about it uh, we'll just start off with that so let's go back to player gy dot h we see we have our toggle and we define that. Now we have our toggle character tab here. What I want to do is I want to do this player tabs dot or toggle toggle character tab 
like that. And we're going to define this in player tabs as well, player GY tabs. And this is going to be the last step, I promise. This is annoying, I know. But we're going to have to do that right here. So void toggle character tab like that and define it. Boom. Good. How did we do it in player GUI? Okay, I put a const there. Don't put a const there. It's not a good idea. Open your player GUI tabs.cpp. Remove the const from there as well. It's not a good idea. I just realized that. Anyway, once this is defined, it will open up in player GUI tabs.cpp. So you want to go to that file and find your toggle character tab here. And basically what we're doing is we want to control X all this stuff basically here all right and we want to put it outside into our toggle character tab function and then that will in turn be called in here all right and in turn we can access it from outside all right and that's kind of a eh, that's probably not the best way to do it but what we can do because of that is we can do this we can do if this or is if sf keyboard is key pressed sf keyboard key this key binds dot at okay and here we're gonna have to put that in so what did we change remember we did open player character tab now it should probably be toggle toggle player character player tab character Player tab character. Okay, sure. We'll put that in there. So toggle player cap character here. Don't put the semicolon there. It's a bad idea. Once you do that, you can do this player GUI toggle character tab. Boom. Boom. Easy as that. Okay, very easy as that. Very, very, very easy. And now if we go back to our player GUI, nothing should be wrong. Nothing should be bugging out and if i run this game hopefully we'll not get a crash am i even recording right now okay obviously we had a few issues here uh what i did wrong was i had i put this in update player gui now what we could do is actually separate those even further so i'll remove this part from update player and we'll call update player gui which we're not doing right now in update so we have our update let's just do this update player GUI DT and now that will be called beautifully uh, and one more thing you want to change is you want to go to your player GUI tabs .cpp and you want to add this get key time functionality into this toggle and we can remove anything from the update here now the update will update the text and stuff like that so don't worry we'll still use this function but let's just go ahead and check this out so toggle should now be working yes it is working but it's not using that all right so another obvious thing is we're gonna need a key time for our game state so i didn't think about that we're using the internal game or internal player gui key time here but that doesn't really work as we want it to so i'm not gonna do that i'm gonna remove that we'll keep it in case because if you want to use that you're gonna have to make an if statement around the whole thing Otherwise, it's just going to put it to hide directly as soon as it puts it to show. So the better way to do this, I'd say, because we'll still need it in game state, is to create a key time variable here. So we have our core shader, all that stuff, player and all that. Let's make a SF clock key time right there. Boom. Easy as that. We'll make an initialization for that and all that stuff. And let's see where we'll put it. So shaders, let's make a void in it void in it key time here boom and we'll also make a key time max so let's see how we did it here let's do an exact same thing as this we can just copy the whole thing actually just like this boom we have a key time max which is a float let's go back to our game state.h let's add that float key time max right there i want to initialize key time of course boom easy peasy lemon squeezy now go to your game state. let's organize this so we know what we're doing go to your game state.cpp go to your init key time right here all right 
like that and we're gonna see exactly what we did actually so we don't copy it's it's, uh, it's annoying to rewrite code right so let's just copy the whole thing from player gui tabs dot cpp put it in game state dot cpp like that boom this key timer actually we'll call it key timer here as well key timer boom and that will be set like that no problems there next step is to go to your player gui again here and just copy this get key time function put it in your cpp first of all we're gonna make a little function thing here uh functions render of course we have render there here we go accessors we're gonna make a there we go control or just remove that actually remove this and boom now we're going to define this go to that file again player cpp game state.cpp and just paste the whole thing in here but remove the two squiggly thingies all right bam bam now we have a nice key time function right here go back to your update for the thingy here let's see which one is for the if i think the latest one is for the if so here we're gonna do an and and this get key time like that and that will toggle the character tab for us and we forgot to call it so many issues today but we forgot to call it but this can happen to anyone don't worry if you remember this you remembered it you're amazing i forgot but we'll call that init thing right here in this init key key time like that and once you call it it will set the key time max for you otherwise it's just going to be a problem now if you hold down c you'll see that it's working just fine you're not having any issues here that's just what we wanted we're not having any problems and we can play the game boom 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 easy peasy you see that amazing amazing everything is working we can check our stats and everything so we're going to be doing that in a little bit but the cool thing is you can still move your character so we're going to fix that as well before we go here actually just one second go to your game state and go to your update player let's see your update player right here okay so that movement update movement where is that where is that where is that sorry here update player input now we're not gonna do this if if this player gui get tabs open okay if it's not open then we can run that all right or if you want it to be super clear let's do false and then we'll just run it again and we'll see that we can't move our character if this stuff is open you see that's not that's not what we want we don't want to move our character we don't want to move our screen or anything like that but if you do want it to be like diablo or any other action rpg we can enable that we'll see how we feel about that later but for now this will be cool all right guys and girls thank you so much for watching this video sorry for all the issues and problems but we'll solve those or we did solve those and we'll keep working on this amazing gui stuff in the next one all right thanks so much for watching take it easy see you in the next one Bye bye